Hello everyone, Jeff the Green Review here. Plants receive all of their nutrients from their environment. Plants are chemical manufacturing factories. The solid material in plants is taken from the atmosphere, water, and soil. They use many different chemical processes to produce the products that are used to grow all the plant parts. And plants respond quickly to changes in their environment. The chemical process known as photosynthesis occurs in small green organelles in the leaf called chloroplasts. Chlorophyll is a green colored pigment essential to this process. It makes leaves and other plant parts green. Photosynthesis is a very complex process that combines carbon dioxide, water, minerals, enzymes, organic compounds, sunlight, and the proper temperature through many steps to make sucrose, starch, fatty acids, and proteins. The plant then uses some of them to form thousands of chemicals and the main structural components of the plant is cellulose and lignin. Large amounts of extra water are necessary to move the chemicals to and from the leaf. If any of the required materials is not at the proper amount, the plant will move out of the thrive range and into one of the lower level ranges. One of the products of photosynthesis is the oxygen we breathe. Oxygen is not a waste product. Plants use it 24 hours a day in respiration, and most plants require oxygen in the soil around their roots. Submerged aquatic plants use oxygen dissolved in water. Shoreline plants often have roots in mud that has very little oxygen in a condition called anoxic, but they still need oxygen in the rest of the plant. Parasitic plants use the resources of their host plant to get sugars and other chemicals that they use to form their own chemicals. And carnivorous plants supplement their nutrient requirements with insect prey. So what's this mean to me? Each plant species has specific thrive to survive range requirements for the amounts of light, water, minerals, etc. that are necessary for photosynthesis. The, there are specific ranges for all the chemical activities in all plants. It's our job as gardeners to meet as many of the thrive ranges as possible. After getting carbon dioxide from the air, most plants obtain nitrogen, phosphorus, and other crucial elemental nutrients from soil. But epiphytic plants growing on trees or lithophytic plants growing on rocks depend on rainwater to wash nutrients to them. Plants get chemicals from a variety of sources and live in a variety of climates, but they still use photosynthesis to process the raw materials. It had long been thought that leaf temperatures where photosynthesis was going on was matching the air temperature, slowing down when cool and speeding up when warm. But very interesting research results released in 2008 by the University of Pennsylvania throws cold water on this idea. It turns out that leaves from the tropics to the Swiss Alps maintain a 71 degree Fahrenheit temperature for the entire growing season, even when the air temperature is much as nine degrees warmer or colder than the leaf. 39 tree species from Colombia to Boreal Canada were compared. It appears that 71 degrees is the optimal thrive range temperature for photosynthesis in many trees in warm or cold summers have little influence on their growth. As warmer and colder temperatures go beyond the 60 to 80 degree thrive range, photosynthesis eventually slows down to a halt as the temperature moves out of the photosynthetic thrive range into the survive range, and finally into the death range. What does this mean to me? Many scientists have thought that tree growth rates were, were related to air temperatures. A warm summer would re increase growth and a cold summer would slow it down. This makes sense as many chemical reactions in nature speed up with warmer temperatures. By looking at old tree rings and the rings in woody, wooden posts for overlapping wide and narrow rings, it was thought that climate data could be researched back into the past where no written records are available. As a result of the 2008 University of Pennsylvania study, scientists now know that the width of tree rings is a not a reliable measure of warm or cold summers, and so it does not work very well as a surrogate measure of climate going back into the past. Other factors that affect photosynthesis are the light intensity, moisture level in the air and soil, and the CO2 level. Photosynthesis is a complex chemical process that needs water. If a plant is too hot and if photosynthesis were to proceed uninhibited, the plant would use up all its water. So plants shut down photosynthesis when either the temperature is too high or the water level in the plant is too low. There are three types of photosynthesis. Normal, or C3, is used by most plants when water is plentiful and the temperatures are good for the plant. 
C4 photosynthesis is used in hot, dry conditions when the stomata on the leaf remain closed so water is not wasted. Closed stomata also trap oxygen in the leaves so the plant uses different enzymes to process the CO2 during C4 photosynthesis. Chrysulian acid metabolism, CAM or CAM, photosynthesis is used by desert and air plants that open their stomata only at night. CO2 is only taken in at night and stored until photosynthesis occurs during the day. C3 is used by most plants most of the time. C4 is used in warm, sunny, hot conditions and CAM is used in desert conditions. C4 and CAM are not as efficient as C3 and plants grow slower using them. We want to keep our plants watered and cool so they can use C3 photosynthesis to thrive. Crabgrass, foxtail, nutsedge, purslane, spurge, and many weed grasses use C4 photosynthesis during hot, dry weather to keep growing, while the good plants in our lawn and garden stop growing. So what does this mean to me? Where is the nearest desert to where you're at right now? It's probably very close by. Think about the growing conditions in the nearest alley, sidewalk crack, or along the gravel edge to your driveway. These areas are hot and dry and have poor gravelly soil. The weed plants that grow there are probably using C4 or CAM photosynthesis to grow where good garden plants can't survive. Interestingly, corn and sugarcane are C4 plants, while pineapples are CAM plants. So just because they're growing in a great place and getting a lot of water doesn't mean they would stop using their C4 or CAM and go to C3. It's easier to control the environment in a greenhouse than a farm field. Growers have found that manipulating the indoor light intensity, CO2 levels, and temperature, they can control the growth of many plants. Higher yields of vegetables and better quality flowers are possible by manipulating the environment factors that affect plant processes. Outdoors in our landscapes, we can grow healthier, stronger plants by locating them in their thrive range environmental conditions. We can maintain our plants in these optimal conditions through good soil, proper fertilizing, pruning, watering, and other maintenance procedures. In other words, this mean to me? Increased CO2 levels help increase plant growth and yield in many crops. As humans have released more CO2 into the atmosphere, there's been an increase in forest growth. Let's talk about plant respiration. Plants can only do photosynthesis when they receive enough light and have proper water levels. But another chemical process is occurring in the plant at all times. Respiration is a chemical process that breaks down carbohydrates, consumes oxygen, and releases energy for all growth processes with the byproducts of carbon dioxide and water. Respiration is occurring in all plants and animals. Plants release oxygen as a product of photosynthesis during sunlight hours. Some of it escapes the plant and some of it is consumed in the 24-hour day process of respiration. Unlike photosynthesis that shuts down when conditions are not proper, respiration continues all the time. In fact, it increases if the plant is too hot. Just like light, water is necessary for photosynthesis. Plants also use water to keep cool. As we learned in the plants and environment videos, water evaporation cools the surfaces the water evaporates from. Around 90% of the water in a plant moves from the roots to the leaves and then to the atmosphere through the process of transpiration. Water molecules evaporating out of the stomata pull on the next molecule to move water through the plant. Increased temperatures and high winds evaporate more water off the leaf. High humidity makes it harder for water to evaporate out of the leaf. Low humidity allows too much water to evaporate off the leaf and out of the plant. Less water in the soil will cause the plant to close stomata to try to reduce water loss in the plant. Less water in the plant will slow photosynthesis, but not respiration. So what's this mean to me? Even if a plant has plenty of water, it can suffer from being too hot. If respiration consumes more carbohydrates than photosynthesis produces, a plant must live on stored carbohydrates. Excessive respiration will move the plant down the scale from thrive towards death. So make sure your plants are installed in the proper environment, whether it's indoors or outdoors, and that way you can help them thrive. And this is Jeff with The Greener View. Thanks for watching.